Well, hello there, folks. This is Wade Rush, host of the Bubba Roundtree Outdoors channel. Welcome to an absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous early spring day here in the Corona capital of South Carolina. Yeah, you heard that right. The Corona capital of South Carolina. Uh, Y'all been watching the national, even the national news. We have made the national news here in <clears throat> the small county of Kershaw County here in the Midlands of South Carolina, the little town of Camden that I am a resident of, I say a resident of, I live several miles outside of the city of Camden, um, but nobody in the crew is affected or has been infected or anything like that. I pray the Lord keep us all safe through this mess until this junk is dead and gone. Okay, anyway, while all this is going on and I can't go out of here, to uh because i don't want to go out and, and get around this mess i just stay here close to home so while i'm here close to home i'm almost out of buckshot and stuff like that so i'm gonna mold up some stuff and i'm gonna bring y'all along with me stand by you know folks i have been privy to some great buckshot molds since uh since I got started in this stuff a long time ago. Uh, it started out. It started out with Sharpshooter USA. Unfortunately, these guys are no longer in business. But uh, Rick made some awesome, awesome buckshot molds. And they were my first sponsor. My, abs my very first sponsor whenever I started this channel years and years ago. And so I bought a couple of Rick's molds right out of the gate whenever I found him on Gunbroker. And then uh, then we hooked up. I helped him get a website and stuff like that. As a matter of fact, I was the admin of his uh, of his website. And uh, But unfortunately now the site is down and all that other stuff, they haven't been able to get cranked back up. And then uh, met up with Marty, Marty's Arms. He makes some great buckshot molds. And yeah, Marty is going full speed ahead. Uh, but I am out of just about every dang size of buckshot that I got. Um, I'm going to be using both of these molds because uh, in um, unfortunately with Marty's molds, I don't have all the sizes that I need yet. I will, uh, I will eventually get to that point. But uh, So we'll be putting some uh, buckshot together here. May even, uh, may even powder coat up some slugs and stuff like that. But uh, hey folks, it is so pretty out here. Let's get busy. And so, folks, in today's episode, we're going to mold up some 31 cal and some triple alt because I am out of both, and they are very, very popular with the loads that I put together here. Folks, back in the day, I loaded so much 31 caliber. I got two molds from Rick. I got Rick to send me two of them. Um, because this is by far my most popular buckshot size. It performs some of the best rounds we've ever developed used a 31 caliber single alt, and that is by far what we shoot the most of. That's about all Captain Buster shoots is 31 cal. I shoot a bunch of it myself. A lot of the guys in the club shoot this size. So we're gonna start out. I'm completely out of it, and so we're gonna heat these molds up. We're gonna start molding up some 31 cal single alt right out the gate. Folks, you just set your molds up on top of the your production pots like so. There's my there's my 10 pound pot that I fixed the other day. She's running good. Got a got a whole pot full of molten lead there. I'm gonna heat these pots up and we're gonna get to work. Very important guys, I use old insulated welding gloves. I'm not wearing a breathing apparatus, but the wind is gusting up to 10, 5 to 10 out here today. And so it's blowing across. We don't have to worry about it. That's why I always do this outside. All right. Let's, uh, let's try our first pour. And yes, I do water dials these pellets most of the time. Not always, but most of the time because it does create a harder buckshot pellet, which helps it maintain its shape even at extended ranges. All right. Let's start out with the... Uh, with the baby pot. Let me get, I gotta have a, we're using the sharpshooter molds, boys and girls, I gotta have a, I gotta have a knocker. 
and using Marty's molds, I just need a pair of pliers. Very first pour. Very first pour. Like I said, I have to bump Rick's molds loose, knock it loose on either side. Not bad for a first pour. And as the mold heats up, it'll get more efficient. All right, pour number two. I've got both pots set on about seven to seven and a half. You want your alloy hot. It's in the 70s out here, which is fairly warm. It's fairly warm from March, even in South Carolina. Got them loosened up. I don't know if you could still be able to find some of Rick's molds on eBay or somewhere like that. I put See, old t-shirts are in here. They help with this. I may have a little bit too much water, but the more I get in there, the less it'll splash. But I got it far enough away from the pots. Can't even see it in this shot. It's far enough away so nothing splashes up and gets in this molten, molten lid. The old repaired pot, this thing is almost 11 years old. And it stays outside 24-7. Pretty pelts. Folks, the reason I have two molds with the 31 caliber is these things, they after you mold up 40, 50 rounds of this stuff, it's, this mold's gonna get too hot. And then whenever this mold gets too hot, I can lay it down, let it cool, grab the other one, and just keep going, and the cycle never ends, so I can get this done just as quick as I can. some of the water hit the mold that time and folks I don't like my pot to get down much lower than this that's why I like having some some smaller ingots on hand for whenever it starts getting down like that you want a good pool in here for whenever you drop your uh, your lead ingots down in there you want to make sure that they stay dry you don't want any uh, want any moisture on these ingots or it'll flare up on you can boil over. See, that one's boiling a little bit, had a little bit of moisture in it. But yeah, I don't like those things to get down too low. I try to keep them as full as possible. Now, these are all 100% wheel weight alloy. You can see when we melt it down there that there's some contaminants right there. A lot of that is going to be other alloys that don't melt is uh, as cold as the lead does it needs to be hotter so scoop this stuff off and I get rid of it I got a draw pot over here you scoop this stuff off and get rid of it Trying to do this a little sideways for you guys so you can see this a little better.
Baloosh. Dang. All right. Gonna mold up some triple alt. And no, I didn't even heat the triple alt mold up because the pellets are so big in these things that you usually don't take but a couple of pours. And, uh, and this thing is running like it should. And I only have one triple alt size mold. So when this thing gets too hot, and they'll get hotter faster than the smaller pellet molds because you're pouring such big lead pellets in these things, they will get hot pretty quick. And you just gotta lay them down and let them cool off. Remember this alloy is screaming hot. First pour. Very first pour. Bigger pellets, cold mold. And that's what we got in a cold mold. Probably about half full. Don't sizzle like it does yet whenever the mold gets real hot. I'm trying to stay to the side so you guys can see what I'm doing here from this angle. I'd normally be right standing right in front of it. But once I demonstrate for you guys a few times, then I will get right in front of it. All right, we're almost, we were only lacking two or three pellets on it that time. Make sure it hazes graze over really good. I'm not beating the crap out of it. And those big pellets, those big pellets will drain the 20 pound pot fast. You gotta always be careful. See how that cauldron bubbling a little bit, guys? Even these old, uh, ingots that have been inside for years 
they uh, they can still have little pockets of moisture trapped in them from the day that you put those things uh, that you put them together in the muffin pans even after they dried off you can still find that there's little bits of a uh, moisture still hung up in these things always always be careful of that stuff That is a big pool of molten lead. And the more that's in there, when you drop your big uh, ingots back in there, the faster it'll come back up to temperature. Impurities of these wheel weights and all that, all that old stuff will come up to the top. Make it a little, you can drop. I've got little teeny pieces of wax that um that I keep on hand to help to use as a flux. Just regular old candle wax. And that candle wax, you'll see a really stick. To the impurities that are floating on top of this stuff you see it change color see that stuff turns like black like charcoal see there Let me scoop that mess off Thanks for joining me today folks i hope y'all enjoyed the video but that's all the process is and i was so far behind with it i got a lot more to do guys i'm gonna bring you along with as much as i can this is wade with the bro channel i'll be back with a lot more very soon guys bye bye